everyone, this is Calimara here, and no, it's not calamari. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new to the pond, go ahead and take a dive. You might like it here. We are back with another Magical Girl reveal, and in this video, we will be covering the wielder of the Songbird Aegis. Arguably the most popular power from my original Magical Girl story, Wild Word. Which makes sense, since most of you who watch me are probably artists or creative people yourself. If this is your first time watching my video about Wild Word, I highly recommend watching my introduction and Q&A to give you some context of what I'm talking about in this video. But the important thing you should know is that I will be telling you about some of the unique powers, appearance, and local rumors of the Songbird Aegis wielder. I also want to address some comments in my previous Wild Word video uh, because I had a lot of people asking what sort of character arc or struggles Ulara deals with because the way I describe her makes her seem like a perfect person without any flaws. And to that, I say that's exactly what she wants you to think. In these videos, I'm speaking exclusively about their hero personas and how people on the outside like bystanders or their teammates perceive them. I'm not going to get into their personal struggles yet because I want to leave that for when I actually start writing out the Wild Word story and introducing their civilian forms, so you'll just have to wait and see. I also want to let you guys know that I've recently started really getting into cosplay and I'd really like to be able to share them with you one day, but there is the issue of my face. So far, I've only been posting my cosplay pictures with my face blocked out. But the issue with that is you don't get to see my makeup, which I put quite a lot of effort into as well. But you guys know that I don't really show my face on my channel, even though I have been planning a face reveal since last year. I was just waiting for the right time, and I wanted to do it after I hit 100k subs. But seeing how people reacted to Dream, I'm kind of reconsidering if that's a good idea. I'm only kind of joking. Because it is a big step for me as well to fully put myself out there, so I've decided to take it step by step. For now, my face is available on my Patreon or if you join my channel membership. So if you're curious about that, go join either one of those. I will be doing a public face reveal eventually, but I'm still sticking with my 100k milestone. But before we get into the video, I'd like to tell you about Wondershare Demo Creator. Little fact about me is that I actually use Wondershare as my main editing software. And by main, I mean the only editing software I use for all my videos. So rest assured that I already love their stuff and am actively subscribed to them with my own money because I think it's super worth the subscription, especially if you're doing content creation for YouTube. And now I'd like to tell you about their demo creator. The Wondershare Demo Creator is an essential demo making tool that helps students, educators, freelancers, and gamers to take idea sharing to the next level. And the best thing about it is, you can get started with zero editing experience. If you're a long form creator like me, this is also the perfect tool to format your content for YouTube Shorts and TikTok. But my favorite thing about Demo Creator is that it offers a 3D virtual avatar feature that basically allows you to become an instant VTuber. All you have to do is launch Demo Creator and select Virtual Avatar Presenter Mode, which is right on the starting screen. Then all you have to do is enable the webcam, select a virtual model, and that's literally it. You can even change the background to make things look more interesting. I think it's an awesome stand-in for my little Kali avatar, and it saves me so much time, especially since I'm not going to be using my own face for a while. Wondershare has just launched the new version 6.0, and if you download it today, you can use their free trial to start creating. Plus, if you post your video with the hashtag presentwithdemocreator, Wondershare will pick three lucky creators to receive a premium license and one lucky winner to receive a $100 Amazon gift card. The winners will be announced in the Demo Creator YouTube channel, and if you guys want a piece of that action, go ahead and check it out. Ethereal, charismatic, gifted, yet melancholic. That is the evening songstress, Nightingale, wielder of the songbird Aegis. Much like the animal she calls herself after, she embodies the very essence of beauty and melody. Wayfish and ephemeral, like the final, fading notes of a swan song. A tragic heroine in a morbid play. 
Her lonely songs ring clear during the silence of the night, a dark, empty stage where the spotlight shines solely on her. Nightingale is a born performer. She pours all her emotions into her songs, like every performance was her last, allowing her to influence or inflict damage onto others. Thanks to her aegis, her voice is otherworldly in its beauty, echoing in a way that reverberates inside your very mind. She naturally draws people to her, even when she isn't trying to. Standing at 5 foot 10 with long slender legs, a willowy physique, and snow white wings, she is impossible to miss or look away from. Even light seems to follow her like her own personal spotlight. She moves with purpose and the grace of a dancer, effortlessly glamorous and divine, like a being not of this world. A ghost, a siren, a silent voice now crying out to be heard. As the chosen agent of the Sentinel of Emotion, Nightingale must cope with complex and overwhelming emotions that are often not just her own, bombarding her at all times. Just as easily as she is able to influence the feelings of others, she is also influenced by the emotions of those around her, being able to sense and feel them more powerfully than anyone else. Thus, her mood changes with the moon, cheerful and optimistic one moment, then fearful and timid the next. She can cycle through the entire emotional spectrum within a single minute, often leaving her distraught, absent, or unfocused. Thus, it is a gamble for whether she would be able to perform at all, but when she does, she is a wonder to behold, a diva through and through. When she speaks, all eyes are on her. Every word, every note leaves you waiting with bated breath for more. Each request she makes is a command that must be followed, her presence compelling those around her to see all her whims fulfilled. It would be natural to assume that her charisma and compulsion would make her best suited to be a leader, and that is indeed the perception that many people hold when the Aegis is gather as a team. But in reality, Nightingale serves as the perfect decoy. After all, the brighter the star, the bigger the shadow she casts. And it is under the cover of that shadow that the rest of her team members operate. She does not bother with concealment or stealth. Her form was intended to be noticed, bright and glamorous. Once she lures you in, you have no choice but to become her captive audience. But very few ever survive to tell the tale. Not a single soul left to applaud the lonely songstress. But rumor has it, her voice can reach impossible pitches and volumes capable of shattering glass, bursting eardrums and blood vessels, and blasting creatures away. Death at the hands of Nightingale is gruesome and painful. It tears you up from the inside out, welling up and bursting like emotions that have been contained for too long. Her duty is to control mobs and crowds, though she must be careful not to ensnare her teammates in the very same trap. While performing, she is vulnerable to attacks by those who manage to break out of her enchantment or are immune to sound. So she relies on her teammates to watch over her just as much as they rely on her for cover. Wistful, captivating, and dazzling, Nightingale commands your attention, directing you where to look and what to ignore. She is a master of smoke and mirrors, a beacon for all to see. Standing upon a pedestal, no one can quite reach. It is not surprising to say that Nightingale is no fighter. Possessing the Aegis with the lowest armor limit, she needs to keep her distance and attack from afar. Her wings provide a quick escape from the heat of battle and are agile enough to dodge incoming attacks. But they are not strong enough to carry her too high up in the air, nor can they allow her to fly at super speeds. As such, her Aegis weapon manifests as a harp capable of delivering powerful sound blasts in the direction it is pointed, allowing her to turn her art form into a deadly attack. In a pinch, her harp can transform into a pair of chakrams that Nightingale can throw and ricochet back into her grip in a dance of blades and feathers. The way she reflects light can often play tricks in your eyes, blinding you and making it difficult to distinguish between falling feather and deadly chakram. That is, until it's too late. Her sentinel stone can be found nestled in the luscious curls of her hair surrounded by snow-white feathers that blend seamlessly into her pale mane. Though, the rainbow colors of the stone stand out easily against the vast monochrome, mirrored by her pale irises. 
as if all the color from her body had been sucked away and consolidated into one mesmerizing burst in her eyes. Her beautiful face is adorned by black and blue iridescent feathers, following the pattern of a fairy wren's feathers, like a stream of everlasting tears running down her face, a perfect representation of the air of sadness that seems to follow her wherever she goes. However, despite her deceptively monochrome appearance, a rainbow of color still remain where the light shifts across the reflective fabric of her suit, a mesmerizing sight to behold, ethereal and effervescent, like a wisp drifting through the mist. Some say that is exactly what she is, a will-o'-wisp, a lost soul trapped on the mortal plane, or perhaps a divine being sent down from the heavens above or a siren from the depths of hell to lead unfortunate souls astray. Her songs can be heard faintly in the night, a voice with the clarity of glass and delicateness of chiming bells. Accompanied by her harp, her gentle melody puts one at ease. Even hearing the faintest hum of her song carried by the breeze can sway the mood of those who hear it. There are even those who attempt to track the songstress down and glimpse her fabled beauty firsthand perhaps even capture evidence of her existence. But like most famous stars, Nightingale is not a fan of the paparazzi. But unlike her peers in the business of fame, she is very good at disappearing from the public eye when she wants to. Sharing traits of such a skittish animal allows her to sense danger much sooner than her teammates. And in addition to her ability to fly, this makes her an excellent lookout. Perhaps, if you find a sudden shift in your mood in the middle of the night, a sudden wave of sorrow or joy that comes as quickly as it goes, Nightingale might have graced the skies within your vicinity. All in all, I think Nightingale is my favorite magical girl design so far. I had a lot of fun with her pose and costume, and I think she looks the most like a classic magical girl. I wanted her to have a suit that would fit right in on a stage for a big concert, so I immediately went and looked up outfits that K-Idols wore on their concerts because I think they always have the best concepts. And that was how I found this dress worn by Jenny from Blackpink. I love the short length of the dress with the addition of an asymmetric trail which would perfectly simulate the appearance of tail feathers. In hindsight, I should have just given her actual tail feathers, but I'm quite happy with how she looks now. I modified some details of the dress to include feathers to make her suit more coherent to her wings, and I decided to extend the asymmetry in her dress throughout her design to give her more of a modern, edgy look. So I went for one thigh-high boot and one ankle boot, and a single glove for only one of her hands. And I will come clean that I completely forgot which hand the glove was on, so it switched places while I was doing her action pose because I actually draw them separately. And in my head, it made more sense for her glove to be on the hand she uses to strum her harp to protect her fingers from the strings. So maybe her glove just changes places when she has her weapon out. But either way, it doesn't really matter. Overall, I'm really happy with how the suit turned out. I was a bit worried it would look too plain or samey, but once I added the hollow effect, it all came together and I had a lot of fun doing them. It's actually really easy to do as well, so I definitely recommend you guys try it out. Thematically, I think it makes a lot of sense to use hollow for Nightingale just because her theme is iridescence because of the type of stone that she has, which is a rainbow opal, which relies a lot on light refraction through the actual stone to display all the colors that it has. And one of the reasons why I chose to predominantly color her suit white is because on the light spectrum, white encompasses all color. So it's kind of a play on rainbow colors without actually fully decking her out in rainbow colors. But it also gives me a lot of flexibility if I want to change up the hollow colors on her suit because it just depends on the angle the light hits her costume. And thematically, it's almost like those colors are ghosts of what was left behind from what had been absorbed by the burst of color in her eyes. Which is consistent to her theme of ghosts. Some of the design elements were also an homage to Tokyo Mew Mew because that was my favorite magical girl show growing up. 
The glove was a reference to Ichigo and her boots are a combination of both Ichigo and Mint's boots. I also think her dress would fit right at home in Tokyo Mew Mew and that brings me so much joy. Let me know what you guys think of Nightingale in the comments below. And that is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Hopefully that means you like my storytelling and character designing and world building, character building? Well, either way, thank you for following my series so far. It really means a lot to me. I want to thank my lovely pond dwellers especially for supporting me. And if you want to become a pond dweller and get early access to my content and my face, then join my Patreon. If you want to see more from me, then please follow me on all my social media. If you want to submit fan art, tag me on Twitter. If you want to chat with me, join my Discord server. And if you want to see more of my stories, check out my comic and my Wild Word series here on YouTube, because that will make me really happy. All the links are in my description, and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye!